Hey everyone, this is Miss Dietrich. We're going to take a look at how you might use pun and squares to explain things like what Gregor Mendel saw, which was how can you get two tall offspring from a tall parent and a short parent? And why do we not get medium height offspring from a tall plant and a short plant? So let's take a look at a pun and square for these two parent plants. Let's assume that this is the father plant. We'll put that here in our pun and square. And let's assume that the alleles that this has, that this parent plant has, would be the two dominant alleles for tall. Because keep in mind, we don't know for sure if it's the two dominant alleles, or perhaps it might even be this. Could be either one. We won't know until we explore the, the pun and square and see what happens with the offspring. All right, so if we assume we have the two dominant alleles for tall, we know that the short plant has to have the two recessive alleles. If it had the dominant allele, then it would end up being tall. If we look at the outcomes of crossing this plant with this plant, this shows all the possible outcomes. It shows uh, four total outcomes, but in this case, all the outcomes are the same. If we take the uppercase letter and cross it with the lowercase letter, we usually put the uppercase letter first. The dominant allele here masks or covers up the recessive short allele. So the phenotype on this plant would be tall. And that's true for all four of the outcomes shown here in the pun and square. Now that's also consistent with what we see here in the diagram. These two plants for the first generation are tall. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take these two plants, just like Gregor Mendel did, and we're going to cross these two. And we're going to assume they have this uh, hybrid or the heterozygous alleles. And we're going to cross them. So we have the heterozygous dad and the heterozygous mom plant, and we're going to go ahead and fill in the pun and square. All right, so these two, we're going to be crossed, and we're going to put it in here. That's going to end up being a tall plant. In this box, we're going to take this letter and cross it with this letter. That's going to end up having a phenotype of being tall, but notice we have the recessive allele for short. But because it's master covered up by the dominant allele, the plant itself will be tall. Here, we're going to take these two letters and cross them. It's going to go in here. Again, another tall plant. And right here, we're going to take these two letters and put it in this box. That's two lowercase alleles, which stand for the recessive short allele. Now, when we talk about the actual phenotypes, this would be a tall plant, would look just like this, and so would this one, and so would this one. However, this plant would be short. It would look like this. Now, that's consistent with what we see here. Now, you know how earlier we said that we weren't sure if this plant, because they didn't specify whether it had the two dominant alleles or if it had the dominant and the recessive allele? Well, because of what happened in this generation and then the generation that followed that um, would suggest that the two alleles were dominant, we're going to reject that and assume that this plant would have the two dominant alleles because it's consistent with what ended up happening here. All right, so the same thing would be true if we studied any other trait. Mendel studied things like the pod shape, the seed color, the position of the flower on the plant. And this is just one example of many things that he studied. But he was able to conclude this idea that there is, is even such thing as the idea of dominant recessive, which is kind of an interesting thing that you would end up getting a short plant from two tall parents. It explains that very nicely when you look at it on a Punnett square.